Es vuestra última oportunidad. In a year when Caribbean pirates and Da Vinci codes dominated the box office, these critical successes made us proud moviegoers. Why would you get so uptight about protecting your house from intruders? Why would you care? I'm just saying it's my house, that's all. <laughs> Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 movies of 2006. What keeps us from being free? Miss Dre. Prisons. Absolutely. For this list, we've rounded up the best films from all genres that came out in the year 2006. Give me a full ballerina skirt and a hint of saloon and I'm on board. We're basing our choices on a mix of their popularity. <laughs> quality and influence. I promise you it'll be like nothing you've ever seen. As well as their critical and audience reception. <laughs> Number 10, Letters from Iwo Jima. By 2006, Clint Eastwood already had two Best Director Oscars under his belt. The Hollywood legend showed no sign of slowing down with letters from Iwo Jima. Boy. By following the Battle of Iwo Jima from the perspective of the Japanese, this World War II film was a breath of fresh air among a slew of war flicks told from a Western point of view. <laughs> Released as a companion piece to the equally epic Flags of Our Fathers, a film depicting the American perspective of the same battle. I won that flag, Holland. Mark my words, raising that son of a bitch which means the Marine Corps for the next 500 years. Iwo Jima was a rare Japanese American production that was shot almost entirely in Japanese. <laughs> With its excellent acting, direction, and cinematography, it's no surprise that it ended up receiving the Golden Globe for Best Foreign Language Film. Number 9. The Lives of Others Foreign films don't often get enough love in North America, even after they win Academy Awards. Der Text ist großartig, wie er ist. Ich will nur sicherstellen, dass er auch bei uns richtig verstanden wird. However, this tense, brooding thriller from Germany took America by storm with its political intrigue and relevant theme about the surveillance of private citizens. Irgendwann musst du Position beziehen, sonst bist du kein Mensch. Although it's set in and around the fall of the Berlin Wall and follows a state police investigator tasked to spy on supposed communists, the film sparked interest about government surveillance in the 21st century. Lassen mich raten, was die hier gerade machen. Gaining traction after its Oscar win and becoming a box office success, The Lives of Others is a shining example of the kind of foreign cinema we want more of. Schild und Schwert der Partei, Genosse Minister. Das wird zu jedem Augenblick bewusst. Number 8, Borat. What kind of music you listen to? I like very much a Corky Buczek. You know Corky Buczek? Bing bang, bing bang, bing, ding, 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 ding. No, 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 no. To say that this film is politically incorrect is an understatement. I, uh... Movie star at Dirty Herald. Yes. Come on and make my day, Jew. Borat exploded onto screens in 2006 and created an entirely new collection of catchphrases that make you want to punch your friends in the face every time they use one of them. Oh, well. King in the castle, king in the castle. Have a chair, I have a chair. However, behind the poop jokes, racist jokes, and all-out vulgarity, comedian Sasha Baron Cohen had tons to say about the state of America. Why you don't call them? Because they do not have a telephone, yes? No, not because of that. They don't <laughs> have They're my respect, you know? I mean... For those who already knew his brand of humor from The Ali G Show... Yo, well... It's a well good law. Or for those attentive enough to realize who exactly Borat is pointing the finger at, this hilarious comedy proves itself to be much more politically charged and socially aware under the surface. May a George Bush drink the blood of every single man, woman, and child of Iraq. <laughs> you know, under the naked wrestling men and whatnot. <laughs> Number seven, Half Nelson. I work for the government school, but I'm also very much opposed to a lot of its policies. You guys hate coming to school, right? Yes. Holla back if you heard me. 
<laughs> After a few great dramatic performances, Ryan Gosling entered the realm of acting royalty in 2006 and earned his first Oscar nomination for Half Nelson. She like you? I don't know. I'm one to like sometimes. That's true. Oh. The main focus of practically every review was Gosling's intense and convincing performance as a middle school history teacher who spends his quality time with cocaine and then gets caught by one of his students. Somebody in it? The surprising brilliance of the debut feature film of director Ryan Fleck took the indie film industry by storm, and it quickly became one of the most talked about and best reviewed films of the year. You missed a hell of a party. Looks like it. Number six, The Prestige. Not the welcome I was expecting. While the world was eagerly awaiting The Dark Knight. The only sensible way to live in this world is without rules. And tonight you're gonna break your one rule. Christopher Nolan proved once again that he could also work outside the superhero genre. Part of a magician's job is to, to watch his competition, to see what illusions... You're going to do something to that man, aren't you? Telling a story of trickery and obsession, in which two feuding 19th century magicians try to outdo each other, this mystery thriller showcases the breathtaking chemistry between the rivals, as played by Hugh Jackman and Christian Bale. When I incorporated this bloke into my act, he had complete power over me. Complete power, you say? The Prestige is a complex narrative about deception, with a shocking climax that caught the world off guard. But whatever your secret was, I have to agree. Much is better. As a result, the film was not a unanimous or an immediate sweeping success with critics, but it has since gone on to become a cult classic and is now considered one of the finest films of the decade. What's conducting the electricity? Our bodies, Mr. Angier, are quite capable of conducting and indeed producing energy. Number five, Pan's Labyrinth. Hola. Soy la princesa Moana. No te tengo after a couple of mega-budget American comic book films, oh, 2006 marked director Guillermo del Toro's return to his Mexican cinema roots. Escúcheme bien. Si tiene que escoger, salve al niño. Since he was already established as a premier fantasy filmmaker, it was no surprise that this Spanish-language fairy tale would be a big hit. not aimed at children. This dark story follows a young girl in a 1940s post-Spanish Civil War landscape as she navigates a fantasy world of magical creatures to escape the brutal realities of a nationalist regime in the early days of Francoist Spain. Y habéis elegido bien. Alteza. A spiritual companion to his equally inspiring Spanish Civil War ghost story, The Devil's Backbone. Por favor. Pan's Labyrinth was hailed around the world for its unique story, makeup effects, and stunning cinematography. El portal solo se abrirá si derramamos en él sangre inocente. Solo un poco de sangre. Un pinchazo tan solo. Number four, Little Miss Sunshine. year's major underdog, Little Miss Sunshine was a relatively unknown, smaller-budget indie film that came out of nowhere and took 2006 by storm. I'm sorry, I, um, sorry. Take your time. Don't apologize, I'll have to sign a weakness. Despite its A-list cast, this film had first-time feature writers and directors who took a chance on a much darker family road trip. Divorce? Bankrupt? Suicide? You fucking losers! You losers! With its uncomfortable talks about suicide, depression, death, homosexuality, and drug use, it's safe to say this black comedy about a family struggling to drive their youngest to a beauty pageant is not a feel-good family film. Well, what do you think your chances are? I think I can win because some of the other girls, they've been doing it longer, but... I practice every day. Although it does have its moments in that respect, the script and acting, however, earned it two Oscar wins, one for Best Original Screenplay and one for Best Supporting Actor. Uh, watch the language, huh? He's listening to music. Olive, I'll give you a million dollars if you turn around. See? Number three, Casino Royale. <laughs> 
By the time Die Another Day had come and gone, the whole world was tired of Pierce Brosnan and of cheesy James Bond films. By default, as I remember. Little did audiences know that they were ready for a new Bond in 2006. Although fans initially raged against the casting choice of Daniel Craig, everyone ate their words that fateful November. Quite the body count you're stacking up. Not only was Casino Royale hailed as one of the best 007 films to date, with its non-cliché set pieces and intense poker matches. I'm all in. But also as one of the finest action films to grace our screens in many years. <laughs> The retelling of Bond's infamous first adventure had everyone drooling for more grittiness and more of this human down-to-earth Bond. The name's Bond. James Bond. Number two, Children of Men. You know that ringing in your ears? That e. That's the sound of the ear cells dying, like their swan song. Science fiction films are usually oversaturated with special effects, aliens, and spaceships. With a film like Children of Men, we see a more humane story of a possible near future and the destructive directions we're taking as a species. Look around you. You see uprising. The world Clive Owen is navigating is devoid of children, as all the women are infertile and everyone is aware of the world's impending doom. <laughs> When a woman is discovered to be miraculously pregnant, she becomes the ultimate symbol of hope and must be protected at all costs. She's pregnant. Yeah, I know. It's a miracle, isn't it? Before taking over the world with his space thriller Gravity, Alfonso Cuaron made us look inward with one of the bleakest and most enthralling depictions of our future with this sci-fi thriller. Usually, there's people trying to get out of the big hill, not in. Sid doesn't know why you want to get in. Before we reveal our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. Where's the nearest hospital? It's far away, about four hours. Is there anything closer? There is a clinic, one on the south. In the bus, it would take us an hour and a half. They took your parents from you. They took your brother from you. They put you in a cell and took everything they could take, except your life. All right, get, get in touch with the Metro Tower, see if they got a hey, visual. Now call Trayton, see if they change. Oh, my reports this morning that a plane has crashed into one of the towers. Oh. You shouldn't eavesdrop on people. Well, you better get used to it, pal. There's not going to be much privacy where you're going. Remember the vow you took? I declare that my whole life, whether it be long or short, shall be devoted to your service. Number one, The Departed. Do you have anyone in with Costello presently? Maybe. Maybe not. Maybe fuck yourself. Although Cape Fear, a previous foray into remake land, was a success. What you gonna do, arrest me? The great Martin Scorsese was not well known for rehashing old material. Frank, look at me. Look at me. I'm not the fucking rat, okay? I'm not the fucking rat. So, few would have thought that this remake of the great Hong Kong crime thriller Infernal Affairs would go on to be one of his most celebrated movies ever. I own the place. Not only did The Departed win Oscars for Best Picture, Best Director, Best Adapted Screenplay, and Best Film Editing, but also its twisting narrative full of double crosses was brought to life by some of this generation's brightest stars, who gave unforgettable performances. Do you want him to chop me up and feed me the poor? Is that what you guys want? Yeah, well, that might stick. With the year's most invigorating drama, Scorsese grabbed the world by the throat in the tradition of his brutal early films. Fuck you! Fuck you! I'm fucking arresting you! That's the stupidest thing you could do! Shut the fuck up! Do you agree with our list? Uh, yeah. What was your favorite movie of 2006? She's my sister. For more entertaining top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. No nos volveréis a ver jamás.